Like many in western Pennsylvania, Stephanie Halowitz watched her once pristine neighborhood become an industrial site. As evidenced by this video, she shot near her home. You can't live like this. It's so stressful every single day. Today, she believes three natural gas drilling operations bordering her property turned her well water kind of like black, bluish. forcing her to purchase this tank of fresh water every month. The air uncertain. I'm very afraid health-wise for the kids just because of the exposure to the water and the constant not knowing what we're breathing in outside. What's driving the drilling rush here and across the country are advances in hydraulic fracturing or hydrofracking, a process whereby millions of gallons of water, sand, and chemicals are blasted deep underground, forcing cracks in the shale, freeing natural gas for collection. It is at the surface where problems have been reported, like blowouts and spills into groundwater. And as shown in the HBO documentary Gasland, ignition at Whoa, the kitchen sink. Jesus. Huge tankers might bring LNG to Coos Bay, Oregon at a facility like this one. Terminal develops power gas will also construct new gas pipelines. About 65 kilometers of pipeline will connect the LNG terminal to the existing. Whether imported or exported, natural gas is more commonly extracted using hydraulic fracturing. Hydrofracking is believed to contaminate drinking water and even to cause earthquakes. It's called Marcellus Shale, and it contains enough natural gas to supply all U.S. gas needs for 14 years. But gas development here can be a catastrophe in the making. Toxic chemicals and methane gas seep into drinking water. And now, experts fear something worse, radioactive radium in waste products. This is Bradford County, northeastern Pennsylvania. This previously quiet corner of America is now at the center of a rush for natural gas extracted through a new drilling technology called hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking. But as the ecologist discovered, fracking is a high-risk process that threatens to both destroy the environment and wreck lives, are all next in the frac firing line. This is a picture postcard part of America, but beneath these rolling hills lies a seam of gas-rich rock called Marcellus Shale. But the shale gas is far from easily accessible. The process itself is that you drill down uh, a few thousand feet into a layer of very dense shale, turn the well horizontally, go out um, and perform some other operations. Eventually, you. Uh, set off charges that blow holes in the pipe and then you fill up the pipe with a liquid and the intent is basically to get sand back in the cracks of the rock to hold it apart so the gas will flow. With many farmers struggling to remain profitable, the large royalty payments offered for land means that many are readily selling off their mineral rights. For others, there is also the promise of new jobs. And on a national level, it is argued that shale gas is a step towards energy independence. But in the rush to drill, concerns about the potential risks of fracking are being swept aside. When I first heard about shale drilling, uh, it sounded like a pretty good idea. The thing that really got me interested uh, and concerned <clears throat> was I found out that under the proposed regulations for New York State, you could drill a gas well 150 feet from this river or the lake that feeds it, uh, which is the water source for this village. Um, and that's just insane. Once the chemicals are injected and the fracturing process is complete, a large percentage of that fluid comes back up. So we have purposely polluted large quantities of fresh water with chemicals that do not belong in the human environment. And now we have the responsibility, the industry, and the landowners have a responsibility to dispose of them properly, but we're talking enormous quantities. Truman Burnett's retirement dream has been destroyed after a gas industry truck spilled a small amount of polluted frac water onto his property. My wife had some health problems and this was 
her uh, recovery area, and uh, we had a little bit of heaven. The only thing you heard at nighttime here was your heartbeat. Now it's it's just totally devastated. And the water dumped out down off their pad, down across my land, into my pond, through the pond and into the wetland here alongside me. And what it did, it killed the pond, uh, killed the fish, killed everything in the, in the pond. No frogs, no turtles, nothing. Our, our drinking water in our house has high concentrations of lead. Uh, they've recommended it, or they've told us not to drink it and don't bathe in it. From our heaven, now it's turned into our hell. Of chemicals is not the only worrying component in frac wastewater. Critics argue it could contain far more dangerous substances. These shale deposits are rich in radium, radium 226. The level of radium in the Marcellus is about 267 times the safe disposal amount, meaning it'll kill you. So uh, there's also, there's, there's anecdotal an evidence that, that these frac fluids will leach uranium out of these shale deposits. There's also radon in these shale deposits. So uh, in addition to the fracking fluid, which we know is toxic, the frac flowback leaches radium out of the shale. The radium is carcinogenic, that, and that's something that's being introduced to the surface in a spill uh, that wasn't there before. Although they declined an opportunity to speak on camera, a spokesperson for the Marcellus Shale Coalition, which represents the gas industry, told the ecologist that gas extracted from fracking is both safe and a panacea for America, offering a fuel that is both a cleaner and a more secure choice than relying on foreign energy supplies. But Professor Ingrafia disagrees. Because in general, in the usage framework, oil and gas are not interchangeable. Petroleum is largely used for transportation. Natural gas is largely used for heating and for industrial activity. So until you can show me a plan as part of a national energy plan to transform our transportation system in the United States to one that uses natural gas, all right, that argument is specious. Natural gas burns cleaner than any other fossil fuel, but it is not cleaner in its life cycle. Studies that are being done at Cornell University right now that are going to be released soon in peer-reviewed journals will show conclusively that the life cycle cost in terms of carbon dioxide emission and methane emission from the development of gas from unconventional sources like shale is at least as dirty as coal. The gas has had other effects on the local community. Small towns have become clogged with gas industry trucks. I have to say, the days of having a nice conversation sitting out in front of the diner are long gone. Main Street's noisier and louder now than ever as a result of the large trucks that the industry requires. They run nonstop. Destroying the planet's water supply is a high price to pay for a few jobs.